Coming up in today's show, stocks put in their best day in two weeks, even as jobless claims fall under 200,000, Apple bounces on an upgrade, prices of luxury items come crashing down, the Fed doesn't see rate cuts to the third quarter, oil prices tick higher, and the new BlackRock Bitcoin ETF rakes in over $1 billion. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Click Capital Daily Market Show. Hope you're all doing well out there. My name's Jared. I'm going to get you all up to speed on everything that's happening across financial markets today. And even though we got those jobless claims coming a bit lower than expected, treasury yields moving up, oil moving up, market managed to put in a good rally. Led by tech, once again, we got a good bounce in Apple on the back of an upgrade from Bank of America. We also saw some good earnings come out of Taiwan Semiconductor, which got semis ripping again. Definitely the leading sector in the market at the moment. Saw industrials put in a good day, and then the yield sensitive sectors of REITs, utilities a bit soft, along with a little bit of softness in the defensives. And not many people are talking about it, but the NASDAQ actually broke out to a new all-time high today but a nice gap up in the morning it held and we finished near the highs and just taking you out to a monthly chart on the queues there just recently taken out those highs from november 2021 now it's thanks to none other than the magnificent seven stocks currently being led by nvidia which it too broke out to all-time highs also had amd breaking out to all-time highs today microsoft less than a point away from its all-time highs but we've still got tesla the weakest of the bunch trying to find support here around 210 dollars and stick with me i'll come back to the charts a bit later on and i'll show you what all other major assets are doing right now so the most important piece of economic data we got today was the weekly jobless claims coming in under 200,000. that's the lowest level in 16 months and basically that's the number of americans who are applying for unemployment benefits it's a really good gauge we get regularly to see how the jobs market is going which obviously has a big impact on the economy and so basically the unemployment rate is remaining low jobs market and the economy is holding up pretty good here and it's for that reason some are saying inflation is far from dead because to really get on top of inflation you kind of need a recession and for a recession you need a decent spike in the unemployment rate that's why looking back in history inflation won't fall back to target without some amount of pain and even though markets are really hoping for the fed to start cutting rates in march we've even got members of the fed themselves like atlanta fed president Raphael bostic saying he expects rate cuts to happen in the third quarter. And what could upset the narrative on inflation continuing down is what's going on in the Middle East and the Red Sea. A lot of industry insiders saying the market's really not paying attention to what's happening over there, pricing in tail risks. From the continued Houthi rebel attacks on cargo ships and tankers having a huge impact on the shipping industry. A lot of them have to reroute around the southern tip of Africa. Insurance rates are going up, shipping cargo rates are going up, things are getting delayed, and it could get worse before it gets better. And even though the world's awash in supply of oil, we have got the price of crude oil ticking higher today, maybe starting to price in what's going on in the Middle East. And we've got more and more flare-ups happening just early today. Pakistan's Air Force launched airstrikes back on Iran after Iran did an attack on Tuesday on Pakistani soil. And so we're seeing more and more activity coming out of Iran and looks like they're ramping things up. And remember, they openly state they want to see the Jewish state of Israel eliminated and wiped off the map. And so can you just imagine a potential scenario if Russia, Iran and China simultaneously make advances on all the territories that they want to gain at the same time the US is having a federal election? Because if they did want to do it, it would be in their interest to do it simultaneously and kind of spread the US-led Western alliance thin. And so this escalation of geopolitical risk can't be ruled out this year. And the only really best hedge for that would be gold futures still hovering near all-time highs, trying to hold on to this $2,000 an ounce level and we're continuing to see crude hold up got a bit of a technical bullish divergence here holding above its 50 day and like i said if we see crude pop up that's really going to upset the inflation narrative and that's something that could be already underway in the markets we're seeing a bit of a tick up and treasury yields as well after yesterday's better than expected retail sales and today's lower than expected jobless claims u.s economy is healthy inflation rates still too high it's kind of hard to see the fed cutting rates in two months from now unless we get a drastic surprise and we're starting to see that shop and fed fund futures continuing to dial back expectations of a fed rate cut in march it was only last week it was 75 percent chance moving closer to 50 50 here but the stock market doesn't really seem to care about that at the moment a lot of bulls still pointing to the 8.8 .8 trillion cash pile on money market funds that they're saying could come back into the market if the fed does cut rates because then all those funds will be earning a lower yield and if the stock market's ripping higher that could cause a lot of FOMO people rushing in 
to get that money working again if it's earning less and less in time deposits and money market funds. We even got Bank of America saying the second biggest stock in the market, Apple, could jump 23% as AI drives a new iPhone upgrade cycle. And Apple actually saw a decrease in revenue over the last year. They don't really have an AI product. You think about it like Nvidia, Tesla, Alphabet, Microsoft, Meta somewhat, but more getting into virtual reality. They all kind of have an AI product except Apple. Not only that, Apple still heavily relies on the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company for a lot of its chips, as well as the mainland China itself for manufacturing. So if we were to see a spillover in geopolitical tensions, and maybe China does the same thing to Taiwan that Russia did to Ukraine, kind of caught a lot of people by surprise, that would be really, really bad news for Apple. But the market doesn't seem to care about that or pricing that in at all. Popping up 3.2% today and still got a trailing 12-month price-to-earnings ratio of around 30, which translates to about an earnings yield of 3%. And that earnings yield actually decreased last year compared to a one-year government bond yield of 4.83%. So for this valuation on Apple to be justified and the stock to keep ripping up to new all-time highs, we'd really have to see some good growth come out of Apple this year. And so even though we've got the NASDAQ breaking out to all-time highs, getting back to those same levels of late 2021, the height of the everything bubble, everything was ripping. Stocks, meme stocks, SPACs, cryptos, pictures of rocks, and things like collectibles as well. However, what's happening in that space is a lot different than tech stocks. Things like whiskey, Rolexes, and trading cards are in a spiraling crash. Still well off their 2021 highs, including non-fungible tokens. You remember those NFTs? They also tanked the past two years. 95% of them trading near worthless valuations. Even prices for rare bottles of whiskey have tanked over the past year. With the rare whiskey icon 100 index, which tracks the price of 100 celebrated bottles of scotch, tumbled 22% between May 22 and November last year. Got a fine wine index tumbling 14% last year and luxury watches as well. I've been on a downtrend for over a year and we just saw that again today with one of the largest luxury watches companies in the world. That's the watches of Switzerland. Shares falling by almost a third after they reported a volatile and challenging Christmas spending period. And there's a look at the daily chart of watches of Switzerland group, which did actually fall by more than a third today, 36%. And just taking you out to a monthly chart, you can see we're still down 77% from those highs in late 2021. Also the largest luxury retailer in the world, LVMH. The owner of Louis Vuitton and another 100 luxury brands around the world. Watches, fashion, jewelry, makeup. That stock too has been pretty weak for a while now. Been in a strong downtrend for almost a year now. So the top end of town's pulling back their spending on luxury items. Things that were doing really well in the 21 bubble. Have what a lot of people have been hoping that's going to make a comeback from the bubbly days of late 21 is Bitcoin. Now that Wall Street's embraced it and launched spot Bitcoin ETFs last week with the biggest one from BlackRock, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, already pulling in over $1 billion in its first four days of trading, almost breaking some records for inflows into a new ETF. And so is that a sign of more things to come for crypto or is it a sign of a peak? A lot of people forget Wall Street doesn't really care what happens. They get paid on AUM assets under management. Their pay isn't linked to the performance. So even if it were to blow up in five to 10 years, they will have still made their billions from it. While most retail investors will be left holding the bag. And it hasn't been a great start for these Bitcoin ETFs. Just looking at the BlackRock one here under ticker iBit, it's already down over 20% from its highs it reached in the first hour of trading. When it came onto the market last week, a lot of people rushed in to buy, did a huge amount of volume. And so that billion dollars of new funds in there, it's already off to a soft start. And looking at a spread of iBit versus Bitcoin, it's already underperformed by over 5% since it first came onto the market. Also saw crypto exchanges like Coinbase fall over 7% today. On the back of the move down in the underlying asset as well, Bitcoin now coming back down to $40,000 down over 3.6% today. And so I've got a theory that a lot of people, instead of buying Bitcoin through Coinbase and being charged their huge fees and spreads, 3 4%, not to mention the third party risk of Coinbase, versus the largest asset manager in the world, BlackRock, who are only charging a 0.12% expense fee per year. For the first 5 billion of assets in their fund, then it'll go up to 0.25%, which is still really low for an ETF. I've got a theory that this may be become a more popular product than to go through Coinbase. So a spread I'm interested in and I'm going to keep watch on is that between iBit and Coinbase. And that would be long iBit, short Coinbase, which kind of takes the risk out of what happens to Bitcoin. And instead, you just go in long BlackRock's product and short Coinbase. And so since the BlackRock ETF came to the market, 
It's already outperformed Coinbase shares by almost 7%, and so I'll be keeping an eye on this spread going forward. Moving on to semiconductors, the hottest area of the market. We saw NVIDIA and AMD hit record highs today after we got Taiwan Semiconductor reporting results that actually fell but weren't as bad as analysts had feared. Not only that, the world's largest contract chip maker also forecast a 20% plus in revenues this year. And they're a key supplier for US chip makers. And like I said, could become a pawn in any military conflict between China, Taiwan, and the States. Just looking at Taiwan Semiconductor shares today, popped up almost 10% on huge volume, just taking that to a monthly chart. They are still in the process of reclaiming a lot of lost ground from 22. How we're doing much better is Nvidia, getting above $570 a share today. And there we've got it on AMD, breaking out to all-time highs as well. And the semiconductor sector as a whole. And what's a clear leader in the stock market at the moment. Moving on to the fear and greed index. We've got a bit of a bounce back today from yesterday's pullback to 57. Here we are right back in the greed zone at 67. Bit of a widening in the gap of corporate insiders selling yesterday versus buying. A little bit of a bounce back in breadth. 193 stocks and ETFs hitting 52-week highs and 141 hitting 52-week lows. Bit of a pullback in volatility today. Volatility risk premium still a little elevated at 4.3. TLT continuing its short-term downtrend while high-yield bonds still holding onto their 50-day. Dollar holding above 103 and look at that pop back up in shipping rates. That's not good for inflation. Uranium still holding up pretty good and a little bit of a bounce back in international stock indices for the Thursday session. The Nikkei is still trading really strong. Big bounce back in growth versus value stocks breaking out multi-month highs and another high for inflation expectation spread. Semis with a clear winning sector today up 3.2% followed by tech in general and transports. Losing sector was biotech, utilities and once again clean energy really deeply Technical oversold levels here. Continued pullback in the cannabis ETF. Meme stocks as a whole still trading a bit mixed here. Another move lower in Spirit Airlines, but put in a huge hammer candle formation. Oh, massive volume, 134 million. This is a really interesting stock at the moment. Might have to undergo a restructuring. Still the risk of bankruptcy, as they do have a bit of debt to refinance with their cash flows under pressure. However, technically speaking, just going down a 15 minute chart, it looks like there potentially could be some signs of accumulation here today. These green candles on big volume could be potentially someone else stepping in here. We'll keep an eye on it and see what happens with this highly volatile stock. And a bit of a bounce back in Boeing after it's been clobbered the last two weeks. And the defense contract is still holding up there pretty good. There's still more softness in the big banks after they reported earnings. JP Morgan really just trying to hold on to its 50-day VWAP here. Okay, so there we are on the S&P 500. Looks like we're flirting with all-time highs again. Market can't seem to do a bit of a decent pullback below the 50. We could be consolidating here, actually building a bit of a base to break out again, especially as we just saw the NASDAQ reach all-time highs. Market really seemed to shrug off what happened with jobless claims today and retail sales yesterday, even though we've got yields climbing back a bit. Doesn't seem to really care about what's going on in the Middle East. And crude could be perking up a bit as well. Be interested to see how the stock market reacts. If we see crude pop back up towards $80 a barrel. Same with high yield bonds holding up really well, continuing to do better than treasuries. So with the semis breaking out and a nice pop-up in Apple, Microsoft still doing well. They're just so heavily weighted in these indices that if those guys hold up, then so will the indices. And so once again, mega cap tech does all the heavy lifting and continues to power on. And so they're the big drivers of this market. However, it'll be interesting to see how the stock market and those big tech stocks hold up if we keep getting some more inflationary data coming out. That'll be the big test for the stock market and if the fed doesn't cut rates in march that'll be a real challenge we'll see whether the stock market can hold up into that's all i got for you today guys thanks very much for tuning in to click capital and hitting that like button and we'll see you again tomorrow for the last trading day of the week cheers